Good morning. It's a, a nice, cool, overcast morning. Uh, it's been extremely hot and muggy the last few days, and uh, at least that finally let up, but it's still so humid I can almost drink the air. Uh, but it's good for the crops and good for the grass. Well, um, good morning and all that. I have not been sleeping well. I have not been feeling well, but here I am in front of you all the same. I uh, got a lot of uh, feedback uh, from my uh, Future of Monarchy stream I did with News Fizz 3 of 12 and Aiden. And uh, I, uh, I don't know how some of you can think that I am pro-monarchy after that stream. I most certainly am not. Um, I got some emails, uh, a message about, I don't know, uh, one of, the, one of the emails I got, I, I might have even been a troll, I don't know, or maybe just somebody really stupid, but I, I am not a pro-monarchist. I like talking about interesting things, and to me, talking about the divine right of kings versus elected officials is a very interesting moral philosophical discussion because these things matter. It matters who rules you and why. It matters how people organize themselves into the strata of society and why. It matters. So, I'm going to talk a little bit about that today. Um, I am not an advocate for any type of socioeconomic governance, meaning a system like liberal democracy or constitutional republic or um, uh, monarchy or national socialism or fascism or any of that. I don't advocate for any single one of those. I like some better than others, obviously, but it's not, I don't think it's wise uh, or effective to, to have in mind a system that you strive for as a pleb like us. And why do I say that? Everyone listening to this channel right now, you are never going to be king. You're never going to be president. You're never going to be senator. You're never going to be chancellor. The best thing that we can hope for is eventually things get better and as they do we're gonna have to help make them better so we don't really have any control at all over what official system galvanizes after this horrible empire runs its course we don't have any say in that this is why I this is why I vote this is why I pay attention to rank boring politics because as a lowly pleb, the only thing I can possibly do to make a difference is vote in local elections here. Now, that means within the current system. I can do a lot of things to make a difference outside of that. You can too. But whatever system comes next, whatever thing that you want, whether it be Natsoc or fascism or monarchy or uh, Ancapistan or whatever it is you want, it ain't coming anytime soon. The beast that we live under, the colossus we toil under, is not going away. It's going to be here a long time, probably long after I'm dead. So this is why I just focus on building community, building connections, getting people of like mind together, raising children away from the mind poison, and building real networks of trade, commerce, um, travel, uh, logistics for trade and stuff. This is why I'm really still big into the sort of lower right quadrant, build your own stuff, libertarian ANCAP people, because they actually get it. They get that whatever good comes for us is going to be by our own hands. It's not going to come from voting, and it's not going to come from the rise of a new Caesar. Like, that's a long wait for a ship that don't dock. So we got to take our fate into our own hands. So that's why I don't really advocate for any kind of ism. I think that we should study all of them because they all led us to where we are now. Monarchy, National Socialism, Constitutional Republic, Libertarian stuff, French Revolution, old style of uh, knightly kings and governments and stuff from, uh, you know, going all the way back to before Rome, studying Greek city-states. That stuff's really interesting. There were brilliant, smart, awesome men back then that organized all different kinds of strategies for trade and civics. Studying old stuff is cool. We can learn a lot from the past. But I don't think you should be married to any current ideology. National socialism, fascism, liberalism, communism, all those, you can cherry pick the things that you think are good out of all of them, but they all got us to where we are now. And where we are now is ass. We need better than that. 
And whatever system works for us in the future, it's not going to be anything that came before. It just can't be. Now, I'm an American, and I look around me, I look around the world, and I see that despite 150 years of evil anti-whites and globalists and bankers and, and foreigners and, and you know who, trying to mess up America, trying to screw things up, trying to disempower us and steal our guns and make us, make us weak. Well, America is still full of God-loving, gun-toting, rural rednecks like me. And that tells me that maybe, just maybe, that uh, the Founding Fathers were onto something with this small government constitutional uh, republic style stuff. Now, that doesn't mean that I want to 1776 again and recreate the exact same thing, does it? No. Even the system that I feel like is probably the best for how I want to live and seemingly has, despite all the corruption, all the evil folks, life in America is still pretty good in the rural areas and we still have a lot of freedoms and liberties that other people in the West just don't have. So, I like this system, but do I look to recreate it? Do I want a 1776 again and do the same shit again? No. No, I don't. Because whatever we build, whatever comes next, it's going to have to deal with things like artificial intelligence. Nuclear weapons already exist. God only knows what's going to come next. Plasma cannons that orbit the Earth. Who knows? Who knows where it's going? Communication technologies? Change, change the game. Change the game entirely. Now it's the mind war, the spirit war. Because people could be propagandized from the second they wake up to the second they go to bed holding this bullshit in their hand. Just staring at the propaganda all day long. Flip, flip, flip. So, whatever comes next is not going to look like what came before. So, you just have to keep in mind, you have to realistically look at what you can do. Hope and pray for the best, but be realistic in what you can do and what you can accomplish. And that's why I think that these people that are super advocates for monarchy or, nat or NATSOC or liberal democracy or communism or whatever, I don't think they get it. It's not the system of the past that's going to work for the future. None of them. None of them. Whatever comes next is going to be something that evolves from technology and situations and warfare. Like, that's, that's how these things have always gone. It's not like governments and militaries and stuff come together out of a vacuum and say, hmm, let's try Marxism for 30 years, then we're going to collapse and do Nazbol for a while, and then after that, we're going to let some uh, kleptocrat oligarchs take over, pick the bones of our country, and then we'll become something better after that. No, that's not how that shit works. That's not how it's ever worked. That's not, that's not what happens. Systems and governments and leaders and things are products of a time. It's all lightning in a bottle. So learn from the past, learn from all these systems. Definitely learn from them. I hate communism and Marxism, and I've read a lot about it, because I want to know about things. I'm currently trying to learn about National Socialism and Giovanni Gentile's fascism. Those things are difficult to learn about, honestly, under the propaganda that I grew up in. So I wanted to give them a fair shake and learn about them. So I have been. But that doesn't mean I advocate for either one of them. You should be the same way. You should realize that the things that came before us are lightning in a bottle, and we shouldn't seek to recreate them or do them over again. Even if you love NatSoc, even if you love Marxism, it doesn't matter. Those things are never coming back. They're gone. Lightning in a bottle. For good and ill, they changed what was and brought us to where we are now. And you can't do them again. It's done. Uh, anyway, I think I've talked enough. I'm almost home. And, uh... I just wanted to get that off my chest to let you guys know that, no, I'm not a monarchist. I just like talking about interesting shit. And, you know, I, I, I think it's interesting that so many people that I talk to in my circles, they like monarchy. And I just thought that that's fascinating because in the state that we live in, I don't see how the necessary substrate of that could possibly work. I don't know. It would just it, To me, it's just like saying, I, I want a a surrogate king who's really just a giant economic oligarch like a like a super trump or a super musk or something like that i just uh i don't like that i think that's kind of silly but i just wanted to have a good conversation about it and see what people who liked monarchy had to say about it so anyway i hope you guys have a wonderful week uh, i should 
I should, by t later tonight or tomorrow morning, have my uh, next Substack article up. Lord willing. But uh, my cousin's over, and we got to clean out the garage today. So we'll see how that goes. But anyway, I love you guys. Be smart with your time and, and your emotions. Do things that, that you can control and that, that, you, that can enrich you and enrich the ones around you. Pot, like eyes in the sky dreaming and hoping about big systems and huge sweeping changes, that's going to that's gonna lead you to sadness because you're never really going to be able to enact that. And that's, I think, what leads a lot of young people into getting involved in not, not anything necessarily bad like terrorism, but it, it gets young, young guys especially, gets them involved in protests and groups like Patriot Front and uh, NJP and stuff. And I just, I don't think that's healthy. I think you should do something more constructive, more enriching, more community focused with your time. I've seen those results in my life and it's made my life better. And I want people's lives, I want all white people's lives to be better. So that's why I say what I say. I love you guys. I hope you have a wonderful week. And uh, I'll be back next Monday night for more Discordant Dragons. God bless.